Right, here is a, um, a practical on looking at what we call IV characteristics. And IV standing for current and voltage. And what we're looking at is how the current and voltage uh, are affected around three components. A resistor, <clears throat> a uh, light bulb, oops, sorry, a light bulb, get rid of that, and finally a diode. I'm sure you know already how these behave. This, of course, of course uh, gets bright. Uh, this one takes electrical energy and just dissipates it as heat in there, and it resists the current. And the diode only allows current flow in one direction and not the other direction. Okay, so how are we going to look at um, how the voltage and current vary? Well, we're going to have to find a way of changing the voltage and the current to look at how it behaves at different... Um, at different values. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a cell or a battery. We're looking for our component in series with another resistor and ideally we'll make this a variable resistor. A variable resistor can change its resistance from high to low. And we've got them in series. This is also known as a potential divider. I'm looking to measure the current in this circuit, knowing the current is the same through both components, and I'm looking to take the voltage about the component. So this could be either the resistor, which is in this case, it could be the bulb, or it could be the diode placed in that position. Now I'm gonna tell you why it's not like this, which is how people often set it up. People often set it up like this. But in this case, the voltage here will always be that which is over the component. You can't change the voltage. You can change the current, of course, because this will change, but the voltage will always stay the same. But we're looking for how different voltages um, reflect different currents. So th the way in which it's done is that you place it in a potential divider. Some of this voltage is placed across here. The remainder comes across here. And of course, uh, you know how much because of the equation V equals I times R. If this is a larger resistance, there'll be a bigger share of voltage, and if and vice versa. The remaining share is deposited here. So that is the circuit of how you work this, how you work that out. Not like that. Good. So what you're looking for is you are looking for um, the voltage or the potential difference and the current, often in milliamps because the currents are so small, current of course in amps and then the resistance in ohms. We know how to work out the resistance from this equation. Ordinarily I'd be repeating my dependent variable three times but many of these are actually affected by temperature and, and, and one run. So if I ran this once and then tried to do it again I wouldn't get the same because the temperature would have changed and so on and so forth. So we're only going to need to do it once. And so therein lies my table of results. So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to change the voltage about this component. It's my dependent variable, so I can choose which voltages I'm after. And then I'm going to measure the current, my dependent variable. And the way I do that is just by tuning that circuit there. Good. Let's see the setup, because electricity is always a bit trickier to set up. Give it credit for. Let me leave that in shot, and let me show you the necessary bits. First of all, we need a voltmeter, a meter, and a battery pack. Here's my battery pack, uh, different cells, and I'm most interested in uh, probably one or two of these cells. So that's 1.5 or 3. I'm trying to keep the leads consistent. Negative, positive side. Let's take two cells. And then, as I've shown, I want to then go through an ammeter. Interestingly, this is the ammeter we're using. It's an analog ammeter, which is a necessary skill that we need to learn. We then go through, I'll just put that, put, place that up there, so we've got the ammeter. Then we need to go through the variable resistor. Here is such an item. 
and then the component itself, which I will place here. The component, let's start with something like a 10 ohm resistor. Good, hopefully you can see that that's how that's set up. Last but not least, we're going to put in a voltmeter. And here is my voltmeter. It's a nice, easy read. Plug that in and it will give me my voltage. I'm going to place my voltmeter there. So my voltage about this component. Good, let me get a little bit more of an angle so you can see the readings here. So there is my voltmeter, about that. Good, right, let's wire it up and see what happens. I'm going from negative side, let's move voltmeter last. These are variable resistors, and they're variable because you wire them up as such from the top into the bottom, and that means the current goes through here, along the arm, through here, and then around the coils until it comes out at the bottom. So in effect, you're making this longer as you slide it this way, and you're making it shorter as you slide that way. Less resistance, more resistance. Good, and finally, we have the ammeter to attach as our last stage. Let me just do the voltmeter. To take the voltage, so I'm going in parallel. I have two parallel leads about my component, and these go into the voltmeter. I'll place it there so you can see this one neatly. It gets a bit complicated with all the wires everywhere. My suggestion would be just to wire it up like you'd follow a roadmap. Make sure you're going around all the components and try and set it out neatly so you can see what's going where. Actually, I'm going to remove that now. I'm seeing how that's set up. Good. This is the point in question, the top bit. It's an ammeter, but it's an analog ammeter. And the way that we make it work is we put on what's known as shunts. There is a shunt, and it basically dictates what the maximum value you're able to read on your meter. So let's take our two points. This is generic to both. And this one means that one amp is the maximum amount I can read. These scales are arbitrary scales along here. I've got one that goes from 0 through to 10, and the bottom one that goes from 0 through to 5. And what you need to discuss, uh, think about in the first instance is, if I've got a maximum of 1 amp, then it makes sense that I'm following the top scale, where each one, with a 10 it represents 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. So it's just a scale which you read with. If I was using the 5, then it would make sense to use the bottom one, because I've got 5 there, so the scale directly represents what I'm reading. And of course, there's such small movements there, I can barely see them at all. As I change the, current, uh, the resistance, I get a bit more movement, but not much. So I might consider changing to another shunt, which gives me more sensitivity. This one indicates a maximum value of 100 milliamps, which is 0 0.1 of an amp. And of course here, it's way off the scale because I've got much more than that flowing through, but I can reduce it a little bit and then get there. So you need to choose the right shunt for the right component you're using, 10 ohms, the battery you're using, I've got two cells here, etc. If I move this down to one cell, then of course I've got less current flowing, so therefore this is probably about right. As I move that across, I can get a nice full range of currents across a range of voltages. So that's what we do. Go all the way one way, all the way the other way, choose your dependent var independent variable, and then read your dependent variable for your component. Good, next, we'll probably bring in a different component. So all you need to do is unplug it, go to one side and bring in a new one, which is a light bulb. Place that in, just like before. And this time, we're not actually seeing much happening there, but we're definitely seeing a current register and a voltage register. And this one, of course, we need to look starting low, 
and then we will slowly increase, increasing the current note that's happening. We're slightly off the scale, ordinarily we would move to a new shunt, but I think that's probably the full range that we need. And we're only just getting a slight glow there. Let me show you a bit not glowing, and then glowing. So you should get a nice range of results there. Finally, the last component we're going to use is, i take this one out, we're going to use a diode. I'm going to bring this much closer so you can see it here on my hand. And what's happening here is that it's a very small uh, semiconductor which actually has one side which is silvered and the other side is not. The silvered side indicates the negative, the non-silvered the positive, which implies that it only lets, allows current to flow in that direction following my finger. Current will not flow in that direction, so we need to test that. So first of all, I'm going to plug this in the right way around. <clears throat> just get the focus back in again. I'm just plugging the leads. I'm getting lots and lots of tangle of leads here, so make sure you keep track of which bits which. And there is my diode. And we're going to start from a low voltage, um, 0.7, and <clears throat> then we're going to increase. Now the problem here is, you can see, I can't get that any lower than 0.7. And as I increase it, of course I can get it more, but I want to be able to test things from about zero. And that therein lies the problem with the circuit here, because this, as a minimum, is 0 0.7. I want to get it all the way to zero. So how do I achieve that? Well, we need to wire up the circuit slightly differently to achieve that, to get our results. So I'm just going to bring you sideways a minute so you can see another bit of theory here. What I'm going to do is show you another piece of equipment called a potentiometer. And that is, I'm just going to draw what we had originally. Uh, where this is the diode. Should I write that as a diode? Another bit of paper might be better. So this is our setup, my variable resistor, my ammeter, my diode in place, and then my voltmeter across there. And we obviously have a problem in how much we can achieve as our minimum voltage. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to wire up a tensiometer potentiometers are drawn like this and then have this sliding scale put an ammeter in there uh, my diode in there and the voltmeter in there <clears throat> and that means as the scale slides I'm similar I'm dividing this up to be one resistor and another resistor so as I slide it right to the bottom here, I can actually, I'm changing both simultaneously, whereas here I was only changing one and not the other. So I need to change both simultaneously, which means that when it's at the bottom, it's zero. When it's at the top, it's the full voltage provided. So how might we do that? Well, that's where this item comes in. This can be wired as a potentiometer, and I'll show you how that's done. Two ports at the bottom and one at the top. So. What you do is, very simply, is you wire it together. You wire the battery and the potentiometer together along the bottom. So you're giving the coil of wire a full six volts across there. Let me move this as well. So you get a full six volts in there. We then take from the bottom here an output and from the top here an output and this in effect becomes my new battery so from the top to the bottom so I can almost ignore that leave that there this is my plus and minus and I'll just prove to you that that is the case of what it's doing I'll just plug that straight into my voltmeter to show you what voltage I'm able to provide I've got from six volts, or nearly six volts, obviously the battery pack here might be a little low, all the way down 
to zero volts. So I have that full range of voltages, hence the advantage of a potentiometer. And then I merely wire this up, the system up, as before. I want to go through my ammeter. Then I need to go through my diode, which is coming, hold on. Let's go positive at the top, important. Here is my diode, it's my next piece. And then from there, I'm just going to go back into the bottom. So I've wired that up as a nice series circuit. And then I need my voltmeter attached about my diode. And we can therefore work out the voltage on there. At the moment I've got a negative voltage of my heavy, I think I just need to rotate those around. That's a positive voltage. There we go. And as I move this down, I can achieve a very small voltage, which I wasn't able to before. So we're going to go up in small increments, small increments, small increments. And you'll probably notice what happens at about 0.7 or thereabouts, suddenly the current starts to move. And it will continue to move until we hit a much higher value. So we're trying to graph what's happening there. And then finally, I will just invert these. So we have now a negative voltage and I'm going to change the negative voltage. And if you notice the negative voltage, no current flows, it's preventing any current from flowing, which is what you'd expect from a diode. Okay, let me clear that out of the way and show you some results now. Here are the results for the bulb and the resistor. Bulb and the resistor. We took voltages, looking at quite small in actual fact. We're looking at the currents in milliamps and then we converted that into normal amps and then we worked out the resistance. I did it the wrong way around actually, first instance, but there we have it. What you can notice is, first of all, the resistance is increasing as you increase the voltage. And when you plot an IV graph, that's exactly what's happening because the gradient is equal to one over the resistance. And you notice here that the gradient is decreasing. And if the gradient is decreasing, that implies the resistance is increasing, what's shown there. Why is that? Well, it's a factor of heat. As you put more voltage in, the bulb heats up and resists the current flow. What happens with the resistor? Same again. We have a pretty constant resistance. Though you might not imagine that between those two points there. When you do plot, it'll be a nice straight line. Again, gradient is one over resistance. And finally, with the diode, here are some results. We have there a series of voltages, much smaller divisions around the 0.4, 0.6, 0.7, 0 0.8. That's where we're taking lots of small little positions because we have this little curve occurring in the IV graph up to about 0.9. And then, of course, in the reverse direction, nothing happens. And you'll probably see the resistances huge resistance, huge, well, infinitely high, of course, resist and then suddenly the resistance decreases. It's decreasing, which means resistance is decreasing rapidly. It's an electrical switch that comes on about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Good. I hope that all makes sense.